Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ty Davis. Presenting the Motorcycle Hall of Fame ring tonight to Ty Davis is a pioneer of off-road and desert racing, Hall of Famer Dave Eakin. Ty Davis, in recognition of your numerous AMA motocross and off-road championships, your four Baja 1000 championships, and your achievements as an entrepreneur, it is my humble honor to induct you into the AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you. And you can take the mic there. Thank you guys, thank you. You know, a few weeks ago, I was out riding my mountain bike, and I was reflecting about being honored by the AMA and inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I was realizing that I needed to prepare an acceptance speech. And my mind was, you know, came with memories of my first bike, throwing my leg over, but throwing my leg over my first bike and my first race, and my dreams of, of winning, and all the endless hours of training, hard work, and all those personal sacrifices, realizing, I, I, was, I was laughing at myself, realizing at the age of seven, if I would have known that all those dreams would have resulted in me having to stand up and speak in front of all of you tonight, I think I would have changed my dreams. <laughs> You know, I, I, feel, I feel that I'm a, lucky, a pretty lucky guy. I have experienced a lot. I have seen a lot. I have been with and met some of the biggest names in our industry. To me, I feel that's a, it's a huge rarity. When I was a kid, I watched these guys on TV, and they seemed like, you know, miles and miles away. Never did it cross my mind that someday I would race with these guys. And, and I would meet them, and I would experience, you know, friendships with them. It's crazy now that I look back at my career and see the people that I've met. You know, in motocross, guys like Brock Glover, Jeff Ward, Ron Lachine, Rex Staten, Damon Bradshaw, Jeff Stanton, Jeff Amick, Johnny O'Mara, Eric Kehoe, Jeremy McGrath. And then to get to experience the off-road legends, Larry Rosler, Dan Smith, Scott Harden, Bruce Ogilvie, Danny Hamill, Dick Burleson, Rodney Smith, Scott Summers, Randy Hawkins, Jeff Fredette, Terry Cunningham. And, that, and that's just, that's just to, to name a few. You know, there's so many more people. And, and then you go to the International Six Days Enduro and race with the elite in the world. You know, I've also had the opportunity to help other riders earn championships. For instance, uh, the late Nathan Woods, you know, you know two-time works champion. You know, that, that makes you feel really good when you can give back and see someone uh, achieve their, their dreams. Um, to think that Someday, to think at the age of seven that this is what lied ahead, you know, it's, it's crazy. I have a few stories I'd like to share with you guys tonight. Um, the first one is Rocket Rex Dayton. Now, I don't know if, you know, I'm sure you guys, I know Brock Glover probably remembers him, but if you go to introduce yourself with him, you, you better have some boxing gloves in your back pocket. We went to the Golden State race, and... Uh, it was after practice, he comes off the course, and there's tons of people, and he's like, just, you know, being a jerk. He's just wide open, hitting people, and my dad reaches over and says, hey man, slow down a little bit. And he throws his bike down, grabs my dad, and says, don't you ever tell me to slow down. You know, and he's got him up here, and he throws him down, and he goes back over and gets on his bike and goes back to the pits. And my dad comes back, and he's like, dude, that guy's freaking out there, you know, I don't know. He needs to get thrown out of the, the park. And I'm like, geez, you know, really? I mean, is that bad? And so at the time, I'm hoping, well, I hope he doesn't know that that was my dad and keep him separate, you know, knowing that I had to race with him. So we had different qualifiers, and, and he was not in my qualifier, thank God. And we come to the main event, and I'm like, okay, no eye contact. Um, you know, I, I hope he doesn't see me in, in anything. And so we go up to the start line, and and they're drawing our, our numbers and stuff, and I go up, and I'm kind of like trying to not, you know, I'm trying to find a gate pick, but not, you know, notice Rex. Well, I look up, here's Rex with his beady eyes looking straight at me. Like, oh boy, you know. So we go, I find my, my spot, and then I go, I, you know, 
the race is coming up, and I go out behind the gate to, to clean my bike out. And I get to the end there, and I, you know how you feel like this wind coming up on you before you get hit? And I, and I come down, I'm just, you know, cleaning my bike out, and all of a sudden, I, I look over, and here's Rex, comes brake sliding into me. And I look over, and I'm like, oh boy, what, are we going to get in a fight here or what, you know? That happened, you know, with my dad earlier, you know, we, you know, <laughs> truce. And he, he turns around, and he just drops the clutch and roosts me. And I, what a jerk. That's a nice way of putting it. I said, you sucker, race is on. And so we go to the start line, and I'm fired up, tell my mechanic what happened. And, of course, I'm on the inside. We take off. I, come in the, I get a great start. I come in the first turn. I got Jeff Matasevich on the left of me. I got a guy in a Honda, and, and old mighty Rex is the next guy over. And they got Russ Wageman on the outside of him. Well, back then, Glenn Helen had these humongous tires, and if you hit him, you were done. And I come in there, and I, I set up for the corner, and I see him out there, and I'm like, oh, well, I just, I'm in control of the race right now, and I just keep pushing myself to the outside. Just enough where he couldn't make the corner. Turn, made the corner, and Rex goes flying across. Well, Rex's fashion was, you know, why ain't I going to get back on where I left the track? I'm just going to cut the track. So he jumps on behind me. And uh, so after, after the race, he never caught up, thankfully. We, you know, we didn't have no contact. And uh, after the race, uh, the, the promoter goes, and, uh, goes up to Rex and says, you know, we're going to DQ you for, for cutting the course. And I thought that was the best thing because, you know, I, I caused that whole DNF. And I thought, you know what, that's what you get, you sucker, you know. You know, I, I also had, you know, it was kind of funny because that's kind of how Rex and I met. And then we became pretty good buds. I mean, of course, I had no money, and, and he was, you know, he started taking me to races and stuff. And then I, I started riding, you know, ATK, and next thing you know, we're doing the Baja 1000. And uh, it was an afternoon, and, you know, coming from uh, Valley de Trinidad over the beach, and we're, we're cruising, cruising on this road, and uh, the sun's in our eyes late afternoon. We're tired. We've been riding all day. And I'm riding, and Rex is about four bike lanes behind me. And all of a sudden, I see this brown thing out of the, out of the left of my eyes. And I, I look over, and it's this damn horse. This horse is going right at me. And I'm like, crap, what am I going to do? He's going to take me out. You know, it's like I'm grabbing the brakes, and I'm trying to slow down. And uh, this horse comes over. And next thing you know, he's up against me, and my elbow's on its withers. And, and all I could picture was the horse just cutting right from my front wheel and taking me down. And I could, I could feel his, his uh, hump muscles, just, his, his rump muscles just, you know, moving and the, and the, the claws, you know, not the claws, the hooves hitting my swing arm. And I'm like, this, this is it. This is not going to be good. And I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? You know? And then all of a sudden we got to a, a certain speed and the horse took off and went over to the side and jumped back over the fence. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I, I was like, I stopped. I'm like, Rex, did you see that? Did you? I mean, what the heck, you know? But... Only in Mexico, you know. Stories like that is, you know, only only in Mexico. Another rider that I've I've looked up to, um, you know, I, I've looked up to a lot of riders. I looked up to Bob Hanna. I always like the way Bob Hanna always says the truth. I love that. I, I think that's great. You know, no BS. This is the way it is, and, and you know what you know where he's at. Um, another guy I, I really look up to is, is Larry Rosler. You know, it's it's funny that Larry. It's just weird how this whole, my whole career is, and Larry's been involved in it, you know. My, we came home from a desert race uh, one time, and, and Larry was going to um, have dinner with us, and my dad invited him, you know, and my dad's no slouch either. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's raced desert for years, you know, he was, he had every number in the, in the, in the top ten except number one, and now I look back at it, I think he saved it for me, you know. Um, he, uh, he raced six days. He was on the factory Yamaha team um, and was at the, uh, on the trophy team. And how ironic, you know, 15 years later, I'm on the factory Yamaha team going to six days. You know, I think that's, that's pretty cool when your dad's done it and then you've been able to do the same thing. I look back at, at my kid now. He's four years old. You know, will he be going to six days? You, know, you never know. It's, uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I've always looked up to Larry's racing accomplishments. I was honored, you know, when, when I went to, to Kawasaki and, and they said, you know, Ty, we, we want you to be the next Larry Rosler. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, here's a guy I looked up to. And, and uh, you know, he came over, to, he was like the first guy to come to my house. He was the first guy to, you know, to give me an autograph poster, you know. And then here I am going to, re- I'm supposed to replace Larry Rosler, you know. The first year I had at Kawasaki... It was, it was the worst year of my life. I, 
I come off the motor, motocross side, you know, I'm this big badass, I, you know, freaking, you know, off-road guys, what are, what are they, you know, then you go back east, you know, oh, wow, these guys are nothing, you know, they can't jump, they can't do this, they can't do that, man, my first GNCC, oh my gosh, I get a reality check, you know, it just, uh, and then I go on, and, and you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm dead, I'm dehydrated, I, I didn't prepare, I'm sitting there, by the trunk of the rental car, throwing up, you know, uh, drooling out of my mouth, and you know, Lael R's over there having a beer, laughing, you know, and I'm like, dude, I'm supposed to kick this guy's butt, you know, and I'm going to die right now. And then they, they thought it was pretty fun, and they'd take me to the Alligator Enduro, and it got even worse, you know, that year they had rain, and I never even saw dry dirt, and I'm like, you know, riding back here really sucks. <laughs> and at the end of the year, I, I almost quit. I was like, I can't do this. I'm not good enough, but I, I gave it I gave it another chance, and I, I went back and said, all right, I'm, I'm going 100%. I, I can accomplish this. And, uh, you know, the next year went, went a lot better. Ne needless to say, LR was a big part of it, you know, and he, we, we did a lot, of, a lot of riding together. Um, he showed me the ins and outs of off-road racing. And when I, when I got my confidence back, you know, it was LR, and it's, we're on, you know, and we had a, a lot of great battles. You know, I, I liked the, you know, LR, I liked the competitiveness that, we always had with, with, with each other, whether it was mountain biking, trail riding, racing, you know, um, LR was a pretty much a, a sneaky guy. Uh, we'd be pre-running and he'd always be the guy that would start, you know, oh no, go ahead, Ty, go ahead. I'll, I'll just catch up the rear. Oh, okay. After a while, I'm like, why does he always want to be last? So then I, I would go down the, down the, down the course and I'd, I peeled up in the woods and I, and I was hiding and I'd watch him come by and then I'd jump back in behind him and and I would you know follow him and oh oh really I didn't know we had this little shortcut oh this is pretty good and then it was, it was funny when I caught up to him you know when he would stop and then of course you know I was behind him and he's like what are you doing you know I didn't even see you and it was kind of it, it was pretty funny but that's the way LR was he was a real sneaky guy um and I have to tell you one more one more story um my first Baja 1000 you know, I got Danny Hamill, I got Larry Rosler, legends that, you know, and I'm this young guy. I have to, uh, you know, I got to put up. I can't screw up. And uh, we got accused of cheating that year. And how could, how could, look at that thing. How could you think we'd, we have to cheat to win? You know, that thing's a pretty cool bike. We were, my section was uh, Borrego down, down to uh, uh, Matomi Wash and down up, up to Porto Cidas to San Felipe. It was a pretty long section. We had to do that section twice. First time, you know, it, no problem. The second time, it was kind of questionable whether or not we were going to have trophy trucks. Well, of course, trophy trucks came, and I had to pass trophy trucks. And I'm down there, and, and I get on. Danny Hamill brings me the bike, throw my leg over the trophy truck right behind me. I haul ass. I go, and I'm catch, I catch up to the next trophy truck. Well, I can't get around this thing. I mean, if you try to follow a trophy truck, it's blinding dust. Next thing, the trophy truck behind me is catching me. Well, you know how they pass. They just nerf each other. Well, I'm in the, stuck in the middle of this. And I'm like, man, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I finally, you know, I pull a ballsy move, and I get around him. I, I'm, I haul ass down to, to Matomi Wash, and I got one more trophy truck to pass. And the guy won't let me by, and I thought I could catch him in the wash because it wasn't as dusty. And so I'm chasing him, chasing him, chasing him about two miles. And we, I knew there was a section coming up where he had to slow down. So I, I make my pass right there. And as I go by, you know, of course, remember, I'm a lot younger, so I'm full, full of pence of vinegar. I get by the guy, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to give you a, a mouthful here, and I clutch the bike. And, rah, and it's like, ring! I go, oh, stupid tire, get it in gear next time, you know, and I stick it in gear, and ring! I'm like, dude, this guy's like on my ass now. And I pull over, and I look down, and there's no stinking chain. I'm like, how could this happen? You know, and I'm like, dude, in the helicopter, you know, Mark Johnson's in the, in the helicopter flying around, and I pull over and I'm like, oh crap, why me? Why me? I'm the, you know, I'm the new guy on the team. Why couldn't it have been LR or Danny Hamill, somebody that has some experience? And I'm over there and I'm like, what do I do? I get my fanny pack out and these Mexicans come, come out of the, you know, they were watching, they come over and, uh, and I'm, you know, they're like, oh, can we help you? Can you help me? And I'm getting my chain and I, and I can you give me a rock. You know, I'm trying to beat the master link. I had a master link, but, you know, being a young guy, I forgot to put the chain breaker in the fanny pack. So... I'm sitting there going, man, Mark Johnson lands the helicopter. He's looking over the cliff. What's going on? And I'm like, oh, the you know, chain broke, and you know, I'm trying to get this thing fixed. And, of course, we had the lead then, and I got all this pressure. And, and so these guys come up, 
on Kawasaki's. They see the helicopter flying around, or what the heck's going on up there? They come up, and uh, they're like, hey, Ty, you know, can we help you? You know, I got this KDX 200, you know, you can use the chain off of it. And I'm like, yeah, right. You know, I got this KX 500. I ain't going to fit this gearing. That's 1642. And I'm like, but, you know, after pounding on this, you know, chain, I'm like, hey, you know what? That chain might, might work. Let's, let's get it off. So he pulls it off and brings it over. I'm, I, okay, I give this chain to the Mexican guy. I go over, I grab the chain, I stick it on. It's, it fits perfect. I mean, I was like, I put the master link in, and I'm like, holy crap. It's, it's all, I didn't have to adjust it. Throw my goggles on, I take off. It was unbelievable. And the poor guy, Skip, he had to stay out there for two and a half days. They couldn't figure out how to get that. The chick couldn't break the chain, and there was no help, and, and, and <laughs> I felt so sorry. We were all going for the wards thing, and he comes walking in with his gear, and I was like, oh, man, I feel so sorry. But you know what? That guy saved the race, and everyone swore that Mark Johnson threw the chain out the, out the helicopter, you know? And it's like, no, that's not what happened. So that was, that was a good experience. You know, I, I, you know, I didn't let the team down, I think, thankfully. Um, so... That was, that was, and that was my, my Baja experience my first time. Malcolm Smith, you know, Malcolm Smith, he, he's a great guy. I, I, feel every, I feel we should all look up to him. First, he, he's a very humbled individual. He's a great rider, supporter. He had Malcolm Smith racing products. I rode for him twice. Uh, and what I, what I was really surprised with Malcolm, which what I really respect is, you know, I showed up at this BLM meeting one time, and they were talking about land closures up by my house. And they wanted all of us to get together. So I show up and, you know, I've never been to one of these meetings. And I look over and there's Malcolm Smith in the front row taking notes. And I'm like, you know, Malcolm doesn't have to do this. I mean, he's older, he's retired. Why, you know, it just blew me away that he's there fighting for our rights, you know, to ride. And, and we need more people like that, you know. All these land closures going around in California, we need guys like that. And I always respected him of that. And uh, he's definitely a man that is giving back to our sport. You know, and I, I kind of laugh. You know, every racer has an attitude. Rex Staten, obviously, he was a fighter. And Bob Hanna, he'll just tell you what it is. He'll, you know, cuss you out, whatever. Larry Rosler is Mr., you know, sneaky. Um, and Malcolm Smith, if, I think if he was racing, you know, back in the day, I think he would just kill everybody with kindness. You know, that's, that's Malcolm. You know, again, I would like to thank the AMA and the voting staff for honoring me as a Hall of Famer. And I want to thank my friends and all my family for being here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you.